Hey guys, welcome back from spring break. Hope you had a good time. Um, we're going to continue with our discussion of mirrors. We talked about plain mirrors last week, and I recommend that you go back maybe and rewatch that video. Um, there's some things that we learned in that video that we're going to need to use again. But today we're going to start talking about curved mirrors instead of plain mirrors. And so I have a curved mirror right here. It turns out that curved mirrors can create two different types of images. Um, and I want to try to see if I can show you that uh, with this mirror right here. That's not what I wanted to do. How do I flip this around? Ah, okay, maybe I can't. All right, we'll do it like this. This is what happens when your teacher tries to learn technology. All right, when we're far away from the mirror, we see an image of ourselves that is upside down, right? That image is upside down, maybe? What are we seeing? Ah, there we go. Okay, we see an upside down image in the mirror. But when we bring the mirror in really close, we see a right side up and much larger image and slightly alarming image. Wow, that's um, that's a lot that's happening there. All right, so far away is an upside down image. Up close is right side up and much larger. All right, let's talk about why these curved mirrors have the properties that they do. Before we can get down to what images are created, we need a little bit of vocabulary about the mirrors that we're gonna work with. The curved mirrors that we'll study in this class will all be spherical mirrors. But that means that they're a piece of a sphere. If I took this mirror from earlier and I kept going in all directions, I would make an entire perfect sphere. And the mirror is just one piece of that. When we think about the properties of a sphere, we might think about the fact that it has a center. And if we think of the, about the mirror that I have drawn on the board here, the center point um, is called the center of curvature. Of the mirror and it gets labeled with a capital C. Sometimes this is one of the ways that a problem will give you information about the mirror and its properties. So we've drawn the curved mirror and we've drawn this line here. This line is a long straight line that intersects my curved mirror right at the point where they're perpendicular to each other. This line is called the principal axis. That's P-A-L as in first, not P-L-E as in belief. So principal axis. So when light rays intersect with a curved mirror, they bounce off, just like light rays do off of any mirror. Last week we learned the law of reflection that says that the reflected angle is always equal to the incident angle. That doesn't change for a curved mirror. What changes, when we defined both that incident angle and the reflected angle, we defined it to the perpendicular line. We defined it to the normal line. That's what changes on this mirror. The perpendicular line at the principal axis is the principal axis, but as you move away from the principal axis, that normal line is at a different angle, which means that the reflected angle and the incident angle are measured to this line that changes as we go. Let's just draw a couple of rays and see what happens. When we look at the properties of mirrors, we think about light rays coming in parallel to the principal axis. In order to have light rays coming in parallel, they have to come from really, really, really far away. Practically speaking, if we need parallel light rays on a mirror, we tend to use sunlight because sunlight comes from a really long way away. All right, but let's take, oh, I feel like purple. I'm drawing a light ray coming in parallel to my principal axis. When my light ray hits the mirror, Every time a light ray hits a mirror, it's going to bounce. It's going to bounce, it's going to reflect, and it's going to reflect so that the angle it makes with this normal line is the same on the reflected side as it is on the incident side. Don't worry about how I know where to draw this line. And if you're trying to draw along right now, your lines are not going to be exactly right yet. We'll see in a little while more generally what these properties are. All right, so let's take a, line, a light ray that comes in farther from the principal axis. Okay, I'm going to have to switch markers here, aren't I? 
This light ray still hits the mirror, it still bounces off so that its reflected angle is equal to its incident angle, but that normal angle has turned, which means that the incident angle is actually larger and the reflected angle is larger, and this light ray is going to bend more than the one that's closer to the principal axis. Let's switch colors and try some light rays below the principal axis instead. If a light ray comes in below the principal axis, it's going to bend up toward the principal axis. comes in from the principal axis, the more it's going to bend. Now what are you noticing? What's happening with all of my light rays? And it's happening because I'm doing it on purpose, right? I'm totally cheating here. I know what the answer is supposed to be. All of these reflected light rays are coming through the same point. All of them are crossing at this point, this point right here. The point where those light rays meet, when light from a parallel source hits a curved mirror, the point where those light rays meet is called the focal point. And the distance between the focal point and the mirror measured along the principal axis, this distance here, is the focal length. The symbol for the focal point is a capital F. The symbol for the focal length is a lowercase f. So we're going to measure this in units of length. We're going to use centimeters most commonly, but we can technically use any measurement we wanted to. This is the thing that determines the type of images created by the, well, maybe not quite the type of images, but determines the images. Um, the amount of curvature of the mirror determines where this focal point is, where, how long this focal length is, and it's going to help us figure out what the image properties are going to be. Now, if I've done this right, and I tried to do it right, you'll see that the focal length is actually half the distance to the center of curvature. What this means is that a problem could tell you about the radius of a sphere, and from that radius you could get the focal point. It would be half the radius. Or a problem could give you the diameter of a sphere, and then the focal length would be a quarter of the diameter of a sphere. Um, you're going to see some of this under UT Quest problems, where they give you the properties of mirrors in different ways. Okay, so the characteristics of the mirror that we needed to define here are the focal length of the mirror. The, the other vocabulary word that we needed was the principal axis, and we needed the focal point and the center of curvature. The fact that we're seeing here, the fact that we're learning, is that light rays that come in parallel the principal axis bounce to go through the focal point. The other thing that's nice to notice here is that light rays can travel the same path backwards. Light rays are sort of reversible. So if a light ray comes in through the focal point, it'll bounce off of the mirror and go out parallel to the principal axis. If a light ray comes in through the focal point, it'll bounce off the mirror and go out parallel to the principal axis. This is going to be an important in a second when we start trying to draw um, ray diagrams and find images. If you want to draw along with me, um, you may want to grab a ruler and maybe even some colored pencils. I'm going to try to use red, green, and blue for my lines just because I like to be consistent with my light rays. You're not going to be responsible for drawing these light rays unless you want to be. So if you want to grab those while I erase. All right. So when we figure out what the properties of an image are, we're going to start by drawing an object. So we're looking for what, what image the mirror creates, but it has to create an image of an object. The object that we're going to draw is going to be an arrow. Now, we can measure the 
properties of this image. And we're going to need to know the properties of this image on Wednesday when we start doing calculations. The properties that we're going to have, or not uh, image, object, sorry. The properties we'll have for this object are the same properties we defined for the plane mirror two weeks ago. Remember, long ago? We're going to have the distance to the object. And in this case, looks like my DO is about 68 centimeters. I also have the height of my object, which is 13 centimeters. Ow, I also have a cat attacking my ankles. Maggie, you're rude. And the focal length that I've drawn here is 26 centimeters. Now, again, we're not doing any math with this today. On Wednesday, we'll, I'll probably just go ahead and set up this exact same problem, and we can do the calculations to see what the, uh, what the numbers give us. All right, to, to find the location of the image created by this mirror, we're going to draw three rays. The first ray we're going to draw is the principal ray. Every light ray that we start with has to start at the top of the object. What we're going to look for is the top of the object, and then we'll just draw the rest of the object in. The principal ray starts at the top of the object, comes in parallel to the principal axis, and when it bounces, it goes out through the focal point. This should look just like the light rays we were drawing before. So my light ray starts at the top of my image, it bounces off of the mirror following the law of reflection, its reflected angle is equal to its incident angle, but we don't need to try to draw a little perpendicular line and get a protractor here because we know where this reflected ray is going to go. This reflected ray is going to go through the focal point because this is a spherical mirror. It's a concave or converging sphere, sphere, spherical mirror, so we know what it's going to do. Okay, light ray one is drawn. Light ray 2 is the focal ray. The focal ray is in some ways kind of the reverse of the principal ray. The focal ray is going to come in through the focal point, and it's going to go out parallel to the principal axis. So my light ray starts at the top of my arrow, it's going to go through the focal point until it hits the mirror. The focal ray bounces off of the mirror and heads out parallel to the principal axis. So this is tricky. I've got to, as best I can, line this meter stick up with my principal axis so that it's parallel. And there we go. The point where my light rays cross, that's where my image is going to be produced. Now, it's nice, we, we've determined where the image is. Two, li two lines are all we need to figure out where a point is. It would be nice to have a third line, a third ray to kind of check our work. The third ray that we're going to use to check our work is the central ray. I'm going to have to erase some of this over here. The central ray is going to come in to the center. Not the center of curvature, but the point where the principal axis meets the mirror. It's going to bounce off so that its reflected angle is equal to its incident angle. 
But again, we're not going to get a protractor out here. What we're going to do is we're going to draw this light ray coming from the top of our mirror. And then we're going to draw the reflected ray through the point where the other two rays crossed. check visually. Does this seem to be about the same angle on top and on bottom? It does, which confirms our point that this is where our image is produced. So we're using the central ray not really to find the image, but to check and be sure that the image is where we think it is. Okay, so these three light rays have intersected at this point. If we drew all of the other light rays, the infinite number of light rays that leave the top of this object, bounce off of the mirror at every possible point, and bounce back, they would all converge at the same spot here. So this is where the top of our arrow is for our image. And to draw the whole image, we just draw a perpendicular line like so. And there's our image. Now, we can measure similar properties for the image as we did for the object. We can measure an image distance, which is how far the image is from the mirror. We can measure an image height, and we will both measure those and calculate those on Wednesday when we talk about these mirrors quantitatively instead of qualitatively. Okay, so far so good? Now, we can talk about the properties of this image without putting the numbers in. And the, the um, acronym? acronym that we're going to use is LOST. L-O-S-T. L stands for location. O stands for orientation. S stands for size, and T stands for type. So, for the image that we've just drawn, the location of the image, I would say the location of the image is between the focal point and the center of curvature. Orientation of the image, what we're asking when we say orientation is, is the image upright or inverted? Is it right side up or upside down? Now, if you remember, when we looked at the image in the plane mirror at the beginning of, this, of this, um, this video, we saw that those images were inverted. The images were upside down. The size of this image, I'm not going to get a ruler out, but I don't think I have to. I think it's pretty clear visually that this image is smaller than the object was. strangest here. The type, the two possibilities for the type of the image are a real image and a virtual image. This is a real image. The reason this is a real image is because it's created by actual light rays. So the light rays that are creating this image are actual rays. The light bounced off of the mirror and these light rays converge at this point. What that means is that if I put a piece of paper at this point, I can see the image on the piece of paper. This sounds bananas, I understand. Um, and at the end of this video, I'm going to take my mirror outside and I'm going to show you an actual image created on a piece of paper because I don't think I fully believed it until I saw that for the first time. So the other kind of image that we can create is a virtual image. If you think about the video that we had last week with playing mirrors, the image in a playing mirror, remember how they weren't real light rays? Your eye couldn't tell that the light ray had bounced, and we drew those dotted lines behind the mirror to show where the image was. That was a virtual image. All right, so for today, we're going to give our location based on sort of the geometry of the mirror, based on the focal point and the center of curvature to help us figure out where the image is. The orientation is going to be upright or inverted. The size, we're going to kind of estimate based on what we see, and the type is going to be real or virtual. Now, two of these are going to get numbers on Wednesday. On Wednesday, we're going to have numbers for location, which will be the image distance, and a number for size. Actually, two numbers for size. One will be the magnification, and one will be the image height. It might be a good idea, if you haven't yet, to go back and rewatch the plane mirror video, where we've defined all of those terms. All right, 
Let's do one more image. Only this time, I'm going to start with an object that's much closer to the mirror. I'm going to start with an object that's actually inside the focal length of the mirror. And here's hoping I can make this work. Here with my focal point, let's not get that erased. Okay, we're going to do the same things that we did before, the same three rays we're going to draw. Every time we take an object and try to figure out where its image is, we will draw the same three rays. So the first ray that I'm drawing is my principal ray. I'm drawing my principal ray in red. My principal ray comes in parallel to the principal axis and through the top of my object, just like it did before. My principal ray bounces off the mirror and it follows the law of reflection. Its reflected angle is going to be the same as its incident angle, but because I know the properties of curved mirrors, I don't have to measure anything. I just know that a light ray parallel to the principal axis will go out through the focal point. ray looks good. Now how about our focal ray? The focal ray has got to go through the top of the object and the focal point. We can do that. It's a slightly weird angle, but that's all right. And when the principal ray, or not sorry, the principal ray, when the focal ray bounces off of the mirror, it bounces off Following the law of reflection, its reflected angle equals its incident angle, but because it's a spherical mirror, we know that the focal ray is going to go out parallel to the principal axis. And we have a problem. Because to find our image, what are we looking for? We're looking for the point where the reflected principal ray and the reflected focal ray intersect with each other. And here's the reflected principal ray, here's the reflected focal ray. Do these two lines intersect? Well, they don't intersect how we have them drawn, and if we kept drawing them further, they're just going to get farther and farther apart. But any two lines that aren't parallel have to intersect somewhere. Where do these two lines intersect? Thinking about them as lines, not about them as light rays. Well, they intersect past the point where they're getting closer together. These lines are going to intersect behind the mirror. Let me erase this graffiti over here. And let's figure out where these light rays seem to have come from. Again, your eye can't tell the difference between a reflected ray and an actual ray. So when, you're, when your eye sees this light ray, it thinks that it started from a point infinitely far away. So that's where the focal ray seems to have come from. Now let's draw where the principal ray seems to have come from. These lines that we're drawing backwards, we're not continuing on with the rays that were coming in, we're going backwards on the rays that have been reflected. This is going to get easier with a little practice, it's going to get easier when you do the optics bench simulation on physics classroom. Okay, so where do these two lines cross? These two lines cross right here. We've got one more ray to draw that'll help us check our work and make sure we're in the right spot. The central ray is supposed to go from the top of our object and hit the center of the mirror. This 
central ray is going to come in like that. It's going to reflect so that its reflected angle equals its incident angle. And we're going to make sure that it makes sense for that angle to line up with the point that we had before. I'm going to go ahead and draw both the real reflected light ray and the dotted line behind the mirror. When that central ray intersects with where the other two rays crossed, this angle appears visually to be the same as the other one. So our point, our position for our image checked out. All right. So let's draw our image back here. Draw our principal axis farther out. And we can determine the characteristics of this image. The location of this image is behind the mirror. The orientation of this image is upright. The size of this image is larger. And the type of this image is virtual. Anytime an image appears behind a mirror, it has to be a virtual image. Real light rays can't go through a mirror, right? I can't see this light anymore. The light can't go through the mirror. It's solid on the other side. So anytime an image is behind the mirror, its type is going to be virtual. We can also identify this as a virtual image because the light rays that create it are those dotted lines. They're not solid lines, which means that they aren't so much the light rays themselves as they are kind of our eye's projection of where the light rays seem to have come from. All right, this is a lot at first. When you first start looking at ray diagrams, it's a lot and it's a little confusing, and that's okay. The next thing we're gonna do is go through this a little bit with the computer program, with the optics bits that you're gonna be using tomorrow or late, maybe even later today um, to draw light rays, um, and I think that's gonna help a lot. Okay, so if this is working like I hope it is, um, then you guys should be able to see my screen and also see me up there in the corner. So I've gone to Physics Classroom, Fraction and Lenses, Optics Bench. I'm clicking on Launch Interactive. This is going to be similar to the concept builders we've done before, but not exactly the same. So let's do what we always do with these. Click the arrow to make it full screen. Okay, so this is the, the um, thing that we're going to use both for mirrors right now and for lenses later. Right now we're learning about mirrors, so we want to click on the word lenses, which shifts this to being mirrors. Um, you've got some different choices here about what kind of object to have. Since we used arrows in class, let's stick with arrows here. All right, I'm going to move my focal point out a little ways, so it's a little bit easier to see. I'm going to leave the height of my image where it is. So here's my object. I'm going to turn all three rays off for right now. Here's my object. If you remember, the first object that we drew was way past the second focal, the, the um, center of curvature of the mirror. So the first ray that we draw is the central ray, and that's ray one on the simulation. Not the central ray, I'm sorry, the principal ray. Principal ray comes in parallel to the principal axis, hits the mirror, bounces off, and goes out through the focal point. The second ray that we draw is the focal ray. Focal ray comes in from the top of the object through the focal point, hits the mirror, bounces off, and goes out parallel to the principal axis. And then the third ray is the central ray. It hits the center point where the principal axis meets the mirror and then bounces off at the same angle. When we draw all three rays, we can see that the point where they intersect is the top of the image right there. Um, you can see that there's actual numbers down here. We're going to work with these numbers later when we do lenses and mirrors quantitatively. So let's get rid of our rays again. And now let's move our object inside the focal point. This is the second image that we drew on the whiteboard. So the first ray we're going to draw is the principal ray. Principal ray comes in, oops, come back here, buddy, comes in parallel to the principal axis, then bounces off to go out through the focal point. The system has already drawn the dotted lines behind the mirror because it knows we're going to have a virtual image. Ray two is the focal ray. It's coming from the focal point through the top of the arrow, 
it hits the mirror and then bounces off and goes away parallel to the principal axis. And then our third ray, the central ray, goes from the top of the object to the point where the mirror and the principal axis meet and then bounces off at the same angle. When we put all three of those rays together, we can see that those dotted lines, which are the virtual light rays behind the mirror, intersect at the top of the image. So this image is behind the mirror, it is upright, it is larger than the object, and it is a virtual image, just like we saw on the, uh, on the whiteboard. So you're gonna work with this system to do some qualitative observations today um, or tomorrow of mirrors. So you should find that assignment on Google Classroom and go from there.